Hello and welcome. I'm Lydia Paulinska of Bridal Innovation and we have a chance at NAM 2019 to talk to the new president and CEO of yeah. Gibson, cool. James Curley. Yeah. Cool. JC. JC. So, um, in our show, we present the strong relationship between creator and creation. Sure. And because we believe that the, the company is personification of the leader. So what would you like to know us? What would you like to tell us about yourself as a leader of Gibson? Oh, as the leader of Gibson, well, I'm a, a passionate musician, whether it's playing or listening to live music or hanging out with artists or just uh, being part of the creative music community. and. Uh, and the chance to sort of take my professional experience. I was the president of Levi's brand. I was uh, the president of Solomon North American Skis and I did a keen footwear. So everything that I loved doing was always a part of my professional life. And then I think the ultimate is that I can take my personal passion of music and my professional experience of, of shaping teams and driving culture and believing in the future. And if, if I can bring those together as a positive collision for Gibson, I think uh, that's what I'm most excited about. So what made you uh, decide to run the company instead of being involved in the company, like investor or advisor yeah. or something? Why? Well, I think, again, I, have a, I think I have a, a reasonable track record of uh, taking some iconic brands and working with them, whether they're startups or big global iconic brands that really just needed some future direction. And uh, when I saw the obstacle course that Gibson was on in the last few years, I decided uh, someone needs to turn that obstacle course into an opportunity course. And then uh, the more I talked to the folks at uh, the new owners, um, they said, hey, JC, would you consider coming on and being the chief guitar tuner at uh, Gibson? And I said, absolutely. So I'm working my way up. And, uh, and things are good so far. So, um, what's your plan to Gibson is big uh, legacy, long history, uh, 125 years, and what is your plan to preserve and extend the, that legacy? Yeah, well, I mean, you said it. So we're uh, we're 125 years old, and for for the last 125 years, we've been really synonymous with shaping the sounds and, and creating sounds of every generation, every genre, every gender for the last 125 years. And, and you can see it all through the ages, the, the effect and the sound that Gibson has helped create. So really that's our, our mission moving forward is how can we continue to shape and deliver and create sound. But uh, our vision is really simple for Gibson and us. We want to be the most relevant, we want to be the most played, and we want to be the most loved guitar brand. And, uh, and I think we're, we're on the way to doing that. And if the last 48 hours here at NAMM is, uh, is an indicator, I think people are saying Gibson's back and, uh, and we feel really good about the future. Thank you very much and congratulations on the new position appreciate and with it. every activity that you are taking. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. For you. Thanks. Oh, Paul Chatterjee here at NAM 2019 with Andreas Sennheiser, co-CEO of Sennheiser. A uh, very exciting announcement about the VR space that you're going through. Can you give us kind of a two-minute overview on kind of what the direction is you're trying to do going into this advanced content side? Yeah, the, what we realized is that uh, to make the great space of AR and VR a uh, reality, we need to start on new production workflows, uh, new gear, new software that um, would complement existing recording and production techniques because uh, we're, the current workflows just don't support it. And therefore, four or five years ago, we decided that we want to enter that space. And now we're here with some partners uh, that help us to do the visualization part and some other software partners that help us design a, a perfect workflow for AR and VR production. So Sennheiser and Neumann brands are known for being the pinnacle of the professional workflow space and one of the challenges for AR and VR has been very user generated focus rather than professional. Do you see this as helping the professional community choose to adopt it because they know these are reliable partners? Yes, of course, uh, we will still be serving both of these worlds. Uh, for the professional, we may expect more knowledge about the details of how to apply the, our products, but also for um, non-professional users, we want to provide gear and software that allows them to produce on a very, very high level without the need to be in the depth of the technology. And then 
one of the challenges for a lot of companies that have entered the VR and AR space is they kind of abandon their main focus for going through. I'm assuming the Sennheiser professional products and performance products, that line is still going to continue and this is additional, correct? Absolutely. This is an, this is an extension to our core. The core is still our uh, reliable, uh, very reliable uh, microphones and headphones. So the core of our business will stay there and AR and VR will come on top. And then the last thing, last year you had the big introduction about the G4 system for going through and the products have been slowly coming out. Has the reception on that product actually been at the level you're looking at? Because from an engineering news group side, we see that the attraction to the G4 is much higher than a lot of people anticipated. Yes, uh, it was also a surprise to us. We, Of course, we had high hopes, uh, uh, but these high hopes were even surpassed by reality. So cool. Thank you very much, and we're glad we had a chance to talk to you. Okay. Playground Sessions is a uh, technology company that teaches people uh, to play the piano and keyboard. I started the company a few years ago with uh, Quincy Jones, and uh, most recently uh, we teamed up with Harry Connick Jr., who's now going to be uh, teaching uh, piano lessons himself. But what's really interesting and cool about uh, the approach to Playground Sessions, we took the, the traditional way of learning, kind of learn to play, flipped it around, and really made it about play to learn. So we're using gamification and real-time feedback to keep people uh, motivated and having fun and and really you know it's been a great success uh, nowadays we're doing over a million uh, uh, getting over a million scores uh, a month which has been really fantastic so with that since it's targeting keyboards there's been a lot of people trying to do learning keyboards where they have light up keys they yep. have things like that. does your technology work with any keyboard whether it's a real piano or an electronic keyboard or is it something that needs dedicated hardware yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll work with any MIDI or USB keyboard, right? So most keyboards uh, in the world really uh, today that have been made over the last 10 years will be compatible with. We also just um, launched a uh, uh, Playground Sessions uh, fully functional keyboard just to make it easier for the consumer. Uh, we're really about going after people that don't play always wanted to play and the technology has made it much more fun and easy for them so all of the trends today are software and hardware together so Playground Sessions now has the complete bundle. So working with people like Harry Connick Jr. and uh, Quincy Jones yeah. they're at that highest echelon sure. for going through. Is this targeted toward professionals or is this targeted toward kids anybody who's just interested in music and wants to learn to play? Sure. So, um, you know, we started with Quincy Jones as, as it, 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 he's been a real inspiration for us and he wants to get as many people experiencing music. And we teamed up with Harry Connick Jr. because he has a real vocation for teaching. And if you watch any of Harry's lessons, it's pretty incredible how he makes everything so easy, so basic. So you're not going to see Harry Connick, you know, the way you'll see him on stage. You're going to see Harry Connick, you know, as, as an incredible teacher who's super intimate uh, uh, and sharing his expertise, but at a very fundamental level. He's really passionate about bringing people in that has never played before. He demystifies the piano, keeps it very simple, and just wants to make sure that you're able to enjoy it. So. With personalities like that, one of the challenges in getting younger members to come in is pianos and keyboards and things, they can be daunting yes. to younger children. Yeah. Does the gamification angle and using these celebrity with their knowledge and experience help kind of eliminate some of that fear and some of that imposing for going through and just making music fun? Absolutely. I mean, you know, we're, we're going back to, to the core, and, you know, our, our whole philosophy is to make uh, learning as much fun as playing. And uh, we spent a lot of time trying to understand what those barriers are, why people are scared of it, why there's such a high failure rate. I mean, we're, a lot of people that buy these keyboards, will, they'll end up under the bed or in the closet within 30 to 60 days. And we're able to use the gamification to make it fun, the interactive feedback, progress charts, you know, goes a long way. And, you know, we always say uh, uh, practice makes perfect, but only if you're progressing. And the gamification goes a long way uh, in, in helping in, uh, to do that. Um, so here at NAM, this is targeted toward the music 
community. Yeah. Uh, with gamification and education, are there other places where we may see you this year, say Comic-Con and more populist events or things like the gaming shows or things like that? Or are you still focusing on the music only aspect of it? So, you know, we, you know, as a company, if you even think of the name Playground Sessions, you know, we don't really go after the existing, you know, music industry or, or, or people today that consider themselves musicians. We go after everybody, you know, so gamers, mm -hmm. right, uh, uh, seniors. Um, it, we really want to make sure that we're, we're reaching everybody, and which is why someone like Harry Connick and Quincy Jones help us do that, just to raise awareness of the platform. Um, but, you know, you'll see more and more uh, of Playground Sessions well outside of NAM this upcoming year, and, and certainly excited to, to be partnering up with uh, Harry Connick Jr. He's a wonderful teacher, a uh, wonderful pianist, and just a wonderful person. Hello, Paul Chatterjee here at NAM 2019 with Linda Chorney, who's the... I'm the producer, the writer... Director uh, and star? Not the director, not this okay. time, and the star of my movie, When I Sing, right here. It is the Rocky Independent Story underdog artist, uh, and I've released it in uh, film festivals. We've won, we've won several awards, and I'm going to probably independently release it. We actually filmed some of it at NAMM, and we had to use subtitles because it's so loud here. So what's kind of the quick story? Is it about you as a performer or is it about anybody as a performer of what's the life like? That's a good question, Paul. It's actually about me. How self-absorbed is that? Uh, I was the first independent artist in history uh, to get nominated for a Grammy Award for Best Americana Album uh, without a publicist, manager, or producer. And I produced the album myself, or no label. And because of that, I got past the gatekeepers and it caused a storm in the industry because nobody profited off of my nomination. So I experienced fake news where they tried to make stuff up about me. And I said, you can't do that to me. And I made a movie about it. And I did a TED Talk and I wrote a book. Cool. And so I made the film and it's coming out. I'm not sure if I'm going to independently release it or not, but go to whenising.com, watch the trailer, it's freaking awesome. Good. I can say freaking, right? Yeah. Yeah! And you are amazing. Okay. When and I Sing. What do you think about NAM this year? What about the energy and everything else? There's always so much energy at NAM. It's my favorite place to go. It's such a buzz from the first minute you arrive. It's just so stimulating. You never know who's gonna be around the next corner. For example, when we were filming my movie here, I turn the corner and there's Jackson Brown. I turn the corner and there's Leland Sklar. So there's a lot of uh, cameos from some famous people in the film. But this movie is therapy for the 99% of us slugging it out in the business today. So I highly recommend it. Well, best of success with it and I'm glad you got this far on it. Keep slugging away. Thank you so much for taking yeah. the time to speak with me. Yeah. So. The Gibson brand's been around for about a little over 125 years, yes. and it's gone through some ups and downs lately, but it appears that the products itself in the guitar area have still been pretty strong going through. What's kind of the strategy on that, and where do you see it going forward in that merchant channel on the instruments? Yeah, so you're right. I mean, we, we have been. We have been around for 125 years. We've been shaping sound across you know genres of music and generations really and um, and what you see here is paying tribute to all of that and what we've done is we've gone back and and paying you know leveraging our iconic past recreating a lot of those originals that you're seeing here hanging on this wall and in our showroom and and then learning from all of that applying that and and pivoting it into the future with our portfolio of more contemporary instruments and so we, you, you, your observation is right. You're seeing all the iconic instruments here that we decided to bring back because they are part of our DNA. And all of these are part of our portfolio of classics. And with respect to classics and modern devices, I see here on this wall, you also have a fairly large array of mandolins in yeah. addition to the guitars. Right. Is that coming back as a contemporary instrument and as something supported mainline, or is it still a specialty product? These, these mandolins that you see here are actually 
a tribute to what Orville started doing in 1894. And these are particular mandolins that we, we handcraft in our custom shop to reissue those original coveted, loved mandolins that, that were in pretty high demand that we had actually stopped making. So yeah, we're bringing them back. There's a, there's a very big movement into getting back in, into mandolin playing. And the same is the case with banjos, for that matter. And uh, so yeah, we're very proud of that. So in that same area, mandolins, banjos have a different sound from the guitar. Is there a shift in the amplifiers that are going with them for a full product space? Or is it primarily just the instruments that are being brought back? We're for the moment showing all the all our line of instruments. Okay. Clearly, the question you ask is a very good one, right? Is is you know where do we go from here? But like the focus for NAM this year was really to, to go back to our core and and really go back to making the most amazing guitars. And then once we've once we do that, and we've I think this is a good start. If the energy that I've been feeling over the last day is any indicator of where we're going, this is a great start. But then is what, where do we go from here and expect us to, see, expect us to basically do other things that are connected to the creation of sound in the future. So the last question, Gibson's been an anchor at NAMM for a long time and its absence last year was really missed. So now that you're back, it's kind of a new booth layout for you. Uh, how's been the reception in general between the avid players? Are they really excited to see you back? Or is it kind of, okay, well, they're still here and they didn't notice the absence? Well, you can tell from, I think you know the answer to that just from walking around our booth, the level of excitement is super encouraging. I mean, it's everyone's incredibly excited. Our fans, the artists that are here, clearly all the industry and everybody that puts this show together. We're back, we're back in a big way. We're here to make a statement. Uh, we're, here, we're here to own NAM. And, uh, and I'm, I am, uh, I'm very encouraged with the feedback that we're getting. Very last question. So in the past, Gibson has been known as being filled with people with passion about the instruments. Yeah. Is it fun or is it a job? No, for, I mean, <laughs> for me, this is the intersection of um, my biggest passion, which is the guitar, music. I've been playing guitar for over 30 years. I'm a big Gibson guitar collector. And so it's an intersection of my biggest passion with an incredible business opportunity to shape a company that has meant so much to many of us around the world, but particularly has really meant so much to me in my life, in my music, in the way that I play guitar, the instruments I play, the instruments I collect. And so it's, it's a combination of both that is uh, what gets me excited. Go back a year, uh, NAM Show 2018. We announced back then uh, a couple of uh, exciting things. Um, big one was the launch of Sounds.com, our platform for loops and samples on a subscription basis. Uh, back then, a few hundred thousand samples, by now over one million uh, today. We announced as well native control standard expanding to effects. Uh, so another uh, milestone moving forward. And then we uh, build just a lot of exciting product and uh, standards coming together in an ecosystem that is supposed to really connect the products and services better and create an experience that is beyond any single product and we really worked very hard on making that happen in 2018. Um, by the end of 2018 we started with the NKS products being 400 in January of the year. We ended the year with 650 so an increase of 250 products just in one year so you see the NKS format is very very popular and 2018 saw our largest product release ever in uh, fall of last year with nine different software and hardware products and three major updates and made actually 2018 the most successful year for native instruments in our history and uh, Q4 was quite frankly off the charts uh, just amazingly well because the, all of the new products including the S4 and 
the new A series, etc., really done well. So and now we are here, and I want to just uh, share with you uh, all the stuff that uh, we're going to present to you in greater detail today. We have uh, a couple of colleagues that are going to show you um, the following. So in the beginning, let's uh, stick with the production side of things. We're going to have the complete control M32, our most portable and most affordable keyboard controller yet. So really something you can take on the go, but it comes with all the power of any other NKS keyboard. So really just a part of the S and A family. The next two audio interfaces uh, that we're going to release uh, soon in spring of this year with a complete audio one and audio two, both two channel sound cards, pristine sound quality details to be provided by the uh, product specialist uh, in a bit. And then uh, we thought how can we make the amazing suite of complete instruments and effects and all of our amazing samples even more accessible. Uh, we introduced uh, different uh, versions of Complete over the years, but we actually never introduced something that is completely free. And Complete Start is just that. It's free and everyone can download uh, uh, a bunch of exciting instruments, effects and loops and samples, and all steered by Complete Control. Great. Um, let me think. I think on the production side, that's it. And then let's move into DJing. We released many, many years ago, Tracked a DJ for iOS. And we are proud to announce Tracked a DJ 2, uh, seeing the light of the world. Tracked a DJ 2 is not just an update. It's actually a completely rewritten product that is not only running on iOS, but also on the Mac and Windows. So really covering all the platforms of our users and uh, it's also connecting to the S2 so really providing an amazing experience once available also in spring of this year. 